Hello and welcome back to our channel. This video will not be our usual tutorial, but an open call for all generative artists. On the 22nd of April, we're going to host an international event which will physically take place in Berlin, since we're based here, but we're also going to stream it online on Twitch for anyone who is interested but cannot make it to Berlin. The event will be interactive both in the exhibition area as well as on Twitch. If you want to know more about the event, I will leave the website link in the description as well as the YouTube channel link where we will be uploading more and more visuals in the future. If you are an artist and are interested in submitting your visuals, I'm going to show you in this video the format in which you should submit. Please send us an email with all the items in this list on the email address I will list in the description box. Ok, so first you will need to submit your work together with your name and a short biography, together with a country where you are based. Then you will need to send all the links where you showcase your work in order to increase your network and make future events like this possible on a bigger scale. And at last you should submit your talks file. Now, for this event, we prefer you submit your work created with Touch Designer, but if you are using another software and the visuals are nice, we will make exceptions. This was it for the organizational stuff. Now on to the technical part. We're going to see an example of how the installation should look like and how the format should be. This will require 5 custom parameters, together with a top in, which will take the input of a camera, a chop in, which will take the input of a microphone, and a top out. Ok, so let's do this from scratch. I'll do it step by step, as if I were to do this for myself and submit it. And like so, you can get an idea. So let's press tab and create a base comp. This should be called My Installation. Let's double click here to go inside. Then let's press tab and as we said, we're going to create an in top and an in chop. At the end of the network, we have to have an out top and in between there should be the components to your visuals. Let's say for example, I'll start with a noise top. The resolution of your installation should be in the ratio 1280 by 720 or 1920 by 1080. Let's keep going here and create a very basic network so that I can show you the idea behind the custom parameters. After the noise, I'll attach a threshold top followed by a blur top. After the blur, I'll attach an edge, followed by a limit. And in the limit parameter window, I'll go to quantize and set the quantize position to round. What I have until now, I will multiply with a ramp. I'll set the resolution of the ramp to 1280 by 720 to match with the rest of our tops. Lastly, I'll attach an RGB key before the out to get the black background. Now, if we scroll out, we should be able to connect the camera and microphone input to the in of the custom base comp followed by an alt top at the end of the network. Now, at the exhibition, there's going to be a screen or a projector and the camera and the microphone will be hooked to it. The visitors will be able to talk to the mic and move in front of the camera and like so, they will be able to affect the visuals. Apart from the camera input and the microphone, we also talked about the 5 custom parameters. These parameters will be displayed on Twitch, so even the people who are not physically on site will have the chance to interact to the visuals. To create these custom parameters, we're going to right click on the base comp and click on Customize Component. Customize Component. Let's right click again and go to Parameters. Ok, we're gonna scroll back inside and our custom parameters need to be within the 0 to 1 range and also accept float values. 
One example of such a parameter could be the seed of the noise stop. Here we can choose to be within 0 to 1 and this parameter also accepts float values like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 and so on. Ok, now we're going to add this as a custom parameter. Let's go to the component editor and we're going to give this a name. Let's say param1. Type here is already set to float, so now we just need to click on add parameter. Then this parameter will appear on the custom page of the parameter window of our base comp and will take float values from 0 to 1. Now all we need to do is assign the parameter to the seed of the noise. Ok, let's do another one of these. Let's open the blur top and here we're going to choose the filter size as our second custom parameter. Now we said before that the parameter needs to take values between 0 and 1. But before we assign this, we notice that we actually like values here that don't go from 0 to 1, but rather from 1 to 6. In cases like this, we need to rearrange the actual values we want and represent them as values going from 0 to 1. We will do this with chops. So let's press tab and create a constant chop. We're going to give it a name, in this case I'll go with blur filter size. From here we'll repeat what we did before with the first parameter. In the component editor let's go with the name param2, then add parameter and then we'll drag this and drop it onto the value here at the constant chop and click on reference. And there we have the second custom parameter. This parameter by default will only go from 0 to 1, so we still need to do the rearrangement. We'll do this with a math chop. After the math chop, let's attach a null chop and we'll put this view active. Then we'll drag this null and drop it as a reference to the filter size of the blur. Then in the parameter window of the math, go to the range tab and finally here we can set the new range to the values we originally wanted, which was 1 till 6. Now on to the third parameter. Let's go with the position step of the limit chop. Here let's say we want the values to go from 0 to 0 0.02. Choosing these values will cause us to run into the same problem again as we did with the second parameter. And we're going to solve this exactly like we did with that one. I'm just going to copy paste all three chops from before and we just have to update to the new case. Meaning we're going to change the name of the parameter in the constant chop to limit pause. In the math chop, we'll change the new 2 range to 0 to 0 0.2. From here, we're going to create param3 on the component editor and click on add par. So it gets added to the list of the custom parameters. And then from here, we can drag and drop it as a reference to the limit pause value. Lastly, I'll put the null chop viewer active and drag and drop it as a chop reference onto the position step of the limit. Great, so we already have three custom parameters. I'll go back to our top network and after the limit, I'll attach a mirror top and a tile top. I'll open the parameter window of the tile and in the tile tab I'll toggle on reflect x and reflect y. Back to the mirror with the fourth custom parameter I want us to be able to control the rotation. Now we already know how this goes. First let's copy paste the chop network once more, then let's rename this new parameter to param4 and click on add param. Then we open the parameter window of the math chop and set the new 2 range to 0 to 360 degrees. Then we put an old chop viewer active and drag and drop it as a chop reference to the rotation of the mirror. Lastly, we just need to drag and drop param4 as a reference to the value of the constant chop parameter. One thing I forgot to show you here is that we also need to change the name here from limit pause to mirror rot. 
And now we're almost done here. For the fifth custom parameter, I'm going to use the ramp top. In the ramp parameter window, I'll set the type to circular and the extent to mirror. We're going to work with this phase here, but first I will add a couple of points in the ramp and assign different colors to them so that we get an effect like this whenever we change the phase. And then again, in the component editor, we give a name to the last parameter, param5, and go to add parameter. Here we can do the same with the chops and rearrange the values to go minus 1 to 1, but 0 to 1 is also fine, so I'll leave it as it is and just drag and drop the param5 onto the value of the face and select reference. Great, now we already have the parameters which are going to be interactive, but you will also need to animate the visuals themselves. In this case, I'll just go to the noise top, open the transform tab and as translate C, I'll type apps time dot seconds times 0.1. The five parameters will be available for Twitch viewers, whereas the in top and the in chop will be at the location itself. Now another requirement here is that you should expand the network to decide how the visuals should react according to the outside input. Let's say for example the camera input will affect the period of the noise. An option to go here would be to attach a threshold after the in top. After the threshold we attach an analyze which will be only one pixel. Then we'll take what we have until now and pass it to chops. Then we can follow with a select chop and use this to select only one of the channels. I'll go with the R channel. Then at the end we can connect a node chop, put this viewer active and drag and drop it onto the period of the noise. Here in the intop I have just inserted a random camera video from the internet, but at the installation we'll have a real camera and the people will move and dance, causing the period value to go up and down. The image data coming from the camera is not limited to one parameter only. You can use this data to drive other parameters throughout the network as well. So for instance I can connect the select top after the intop and connect the select to the first input of a displace while I connect the tile to the second input. Then in the parameter window of the displace I can increase or decrease the weight to have different merging between our two inputs. Another thing I would do here is attach a limit stop after the select and in the parameter window I'll go to quantize tab, set the quantize value to floor and increase or decrease the value step. So you can choose however you want to display this. You can be creative, there are really no limits here. Whereas for the microphone input I would connect an audio spectrum chop after the in chop followed by an analyze. The analyze is going to output some values. These values we can input into a math chop and in the multi add tab we can multiply them with some other value. This value is not important for the beginning since we're going to recalibrate this on site based on how sensitive the microphones are going to be. So no need to worry about this now. Then after the math let's connect an all chop followed by a speed chop.
Then we can use the speed chop to animate the translate Z value of the noise from before. So instead of animating the noise over time, we'll animate it using the microphone input. So the people can talk or sing or whistle on the microphone or the DJs will play some tracks and the microphone will pick up this sound data and drive this parameter. This is just an idea of course, you can choose to animate anything else. But this is basically it. This is the format you should submit. Just remember we need an in chop for the microphone and this input should affect at least one parameter of your network. The same for the in top and at the end we need an out top. In between you can go wild with your network. It's only important that you provide five custom parameters. At the end you'll save this as a tox and send it to us together with the information I mentioned in the beginning to the Symbiotism email address you'll find in the description box. There you'll also find the website to Symbiotism if you want to know more as well as the link where you can purchase the ticket to the event. If you're an artist and we choose to display your installation on this first event, you do not need to get a ticket. We're really excited for this first event, the location is very nice, we have visited there many times they organize amazing parties and there's going to be food and drinks and lots of friendly people to hang out with. We're also very excited to meet you guys who have been watching and supporting us for so long. We're really hoping that this will be a success and only the first of many other installations. I'm looking forward to read all your emails and watch all your amazing visuals. If there are any questions please leave them below and I'll meet you very soon on the next tutorial. Here is a preview of that one coming this Friday, April the 7th at 6pm. Until then, have a great time, bye!